The aims of this video will be to link what we learnt about multiplication in the context of a one-to-many relationship and explore its connection to division in the context of grouping. We'll use this to begin to divide things into groups of five. In our multiplication video, we saw that one pack of bagels contained five bagels. This was a one to five relationship. Another example might be that a particular recipe for making stew requires five carrots. So if one pot of stew uses five carrots, it also has a one to five relationship. For the video today, we're going to imagine we work in a bakery that produces cookies. One pack of cookies contains five cookies. You'll need to work out how many packs can be made based on the different numbers of cookies that we've got. If there are five cookies, how many bags can be made up? We know that there are five cookies per group or per bag, so we would just be able to make up one bag of cookies. Let's see how to write this as an equation using a division symbol. We knew the total number of cookies, which was five. We knew the number of cookies per group or per bag. There were five cookies per group or per bag. So we were dividing the cookies into groups of five. We were trying to figure out how many of those groups we've got which will tell us how many bags of cookies the bakery can make up. They've got just one group of five, so they can make up just one bag of cookies. So five divided by five equals one. What if the bakery had 50 cookies? How many bags could be made up then? Pause the video and try to work it out before carrying on. We'll talk through a few different ways that you might have solved this. Compare these strategies to your own. Did you solve the problem in the same way or a different way? What are the advantages or disadvantages of each strategy? Let's have a look at the first strategy. We know that one bag needs five cookies. So one way we could have done this is count in fives until we've used up all the cookies. We can keep track of the number of bags as we go. So five cookies would make one bag, 10 cookies would make two bags, 15 cookies would make three bags, 20 cookies would make four bags, 25 cookies would make five bags, 30 cookies would make six bags, 35 cookies would make seven bags, 40 cookies would make 8 bags, 45 cookies would make 9 bags, and 50 cookies would make 10 bags. So if the bakery has 50 cookies, they'll be able to make 10 bags if there are 5 cookies in each bag. Or you might have thought to yourself that if 5 cookies is 1 bag and 10 cookies is 2 bags, you could count up in tens each time. So 10 cookies would be two bags, as we've seen. 20 cookies would be four bags. 30 cookies would be six bags. 40 cookies would be eight bags. And 50 cookies would be 10 bags. So if the bakery has 50 cookies, they'll be able to make up 10 bags if there were five cookies in each bag. This is the same answer as before, we just worked it out a different way. Another way you might have thought about it is, we know we have 50 cookies. Let's imagine for a moment that instead of five per bag, the cookies are packed with 10 cookies per bag. This would mean they end up with five bags. 
you may have made connections with your knowledge of your multiplication facts, such as 5 lots of 10 equals 50, or 5 times 10 equals 50. But this isn't the solution. We need to remember that the bakery weren't packaging the cookies in groups of 10. They were packaging them in groups of 5. That's one half of the number of cookies per bag. So we've still got 50 cookies, but we've got 5 cookies per bag instead of 10 cookies per bag. As we've said, this is one half of the number of cookies per bag compared to before. This means that we'll need double the number of bags, 10 bags instead of 5 bags. Again, you might have made connections to multiplication facts that you know already. 10 groups of 5 equals 50, or 10 times 5 equals 50. If we're trying to make sense of how to record the relationship between the total number of cookies, the number of cookies per bag, and the number of bags, we can record it in an equation using a division symbol. We'll shrink the cookies for a moment, just so that we've got a bit more room to write. We know the total number of cookies. The bakery had 50 cookies. We know the number of cookies per group or per bag. The bakery was putting the cookies into groups of five. There were five cookies per bag. We were trying to work out the total number of groups. This will tell us how many full bags of cookies the bakery will be able to make up. We figured out that this was 10. So 50 put into groups of 5 gives 10 groups. Or 50 divided by 5 equals 10. You might also be starting to notice the connection between multiplication and division. If we know that 50 divided by 5 equals 10, or put another way, 50 cookies divided into groups of 5 cookies per bag gives us 10 bags. We also know that 10 lots of 5 cookies, or 10 bags with 5 cookies per bag, will give us 50 cookies. So 10 times 5 equals 50, and 50 divided by 5 equals 10. Before we finish, let's do one more example. How many bags would the bakery need if it had 45 cookies? Pause the video and see if you can work this out before continuing. Can you use your answer to the problem we just solved to help you? We've left it on the screen for you in case it's useful. So remember, you're trying to work out how many bags could be made up with 45 cookies. Again, there are lots of ways you might have worked this out, but we'll look at one strategy here that makes use of information we already knew. We knew from the previous question that 50 cookies packaged into bags with 5 cookies per bag would make 10 bags. We recorded this in an equation like this. 50 divided by 5 equals 10. The new problem was asking how many bags would we be able to make up if there were just 45 cookies? You might have noticed that 45 cookies is one group of five less than 50 cookies. So if we have five cookies fewer than before, 45 cookies instead of 50 cookies, and they are still being packaged into groups of five, then we're going to have one fewer groups than we did before. We'll now have nine groups or bags of cookies instead of 10. So if the bakery had 45 cookies and packaged them into groups of five, they would be able to make up nine bags or 45 divided by five equals nine. So, just to review what we explored in this video. We've linked what we've learnt about multiplication in the context of a one-to-many relationship and explored its connection to division in the context of grouping. We used this to begin to divide things into groups of five. 
There are other contexts for multiplication and division that we'll explore in other videos, but hopefully that's helped you to get a better understanding of both multiplication and division in the context of one-to-many relationships and grouping.